Alright, hello again kids. Uh, this is Adam out here. We're uh, combining corn here. It's the end of October on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Um, just showing you, it's pretty much just like combining beans, the same same uh, philosophy. It's just with a different head. Uh, we use six roll head and it has 30 inch spacing. There's 30 inch spacing between each roll. And we take six rolls at a time because we use a 12 roll planter. So that's why we're doing six. And as you can see, the moisture is running around between 16 and 17 percent right now. Um, you know, I, I was telling you guys before, moisture for corn is usually they start. Uh, the standard is 15 percent, and when it's above this, they'll charge you a drying cost of about five cents a bushel, and then they'll also take off for the shrink because you'll lose. They take off for shrinkage of the corn because you're going to lose the moisture, and that's usually a, a, a one and a half percent shrink for um, every point of moisture over 15 percent. So if it's uh, 17, say you're taking a load and it's 17 percent moisture, they're going to dock you 10 cents because it's a nickel for every percentage point above 15. So there's there your two percentage above 15. So there's going to be a dime. They're going to take off 10 cents a bushel for the drying, plus they'll take off the 3% shrink to get your bushels figured out. And the 3% shrink is it's one and a half percentage shrinkage points for every percentage point over 15. And like I said, it was 17, so you're two percentage points over the 15. So two times one and a half is 3%. So that's how they come up with, when we sell it, that's how they come up with a price to, to charge you for the drying and and for their actual bushels that they're going to sell later on. So here the corn this year has been uh, pretty good. Um, we've been in about 160 to about 190 bushel corn, so it's been pretty good. It's been a little wetter than average, but it, it has dried down now. With the beautiful days we've had, the warmer days we've had, it's really dried down. We combined some two weeks ago. It was about 20 to 23 percent, and now it's down around 17. You know, not 17 percent either. Either side is 17 percent, so it, it has dried down fairly good. Um, so for right now, we're about 40 percent done, and we'll go home here. We'll fill a truck up, and then I'll take you home, and I'll show you how we dry it in our dryer, and we'll show you what that looks like, and we'll show you the cows out on the corn stalks grazing the corn stalks after we got them after we combine them. So. That's what we'll do after we get done, get the truck full here. Okay, once we got the truck loaded from the field, we bring it up here to the yard, to our uh, drying site here. Um, this is our unloading auger. We'll back up to it with the truck here. Uh, we'll dump the grain in here in the auger. Um, dump the corn in here and it takes it up to that auger and then it takes it all the way up into the bin. And this is our drying bin right here that it's hooked up to right now. We'll put the grain in there, you know, it's about 18, 18% or 20% moisture. And we'll set, there's a dial on there, how dry or wet you want it. If you want it a little wetter, you move it, the dial over to make it wetter. If you want it a little drier, you turn the dial to make it a little drier. And what you're aiming for is you're, we're aiming for that 15% mark. I usually try and get it around that 14 and a half to about 14.8 percent moisture and that'll be about just right. So we'll go back and take a look at the dryer and uh, we'll take a look inside the drying bin right now. So. Uh, once the grain gets in here uh, there's a sensor over here on the side. Um, once it gets to the to the desired uh, moisture desired moisture it kicks on those sweep augers that are in there that you can see the one. There's two augers in there. And what they do is they'll turn on and then they'll take it up that vertical auger and then they'll, it goes up there and it transfers the grain over to our other bin here, the dry, the dry grain. And as it does it, all the wet grain just keeps slowly uh, following down to get the heat underneath. And the temperature in here, we, um, it's around 140 to 150 degrees is the peak and it goes, it gets up to about 150 and then it'll come back to about 130. And then it keeps going back and forth between 130 to 150 degrees in there. So that's how hot it gets. And it's run by, there's two fans that blow the heat up through the, through the floor bottoms. And there's about, 
I think there are 26 horse uh, fans that really kick a lot of air up in here. If you put your head in here when that's when it's on, um, it's actually fairly hot inside this bin. Once you if you put your head in there, and at night uh, the condensation with the moisture in there, it, it's almost like it's raining in there. So that's what it's kind of like to give you an idea of the how it's dried. Um, this is a fan here on the on the cooling bin when it transfers the corn over. Um, we need to have the fan running just to bring the temperature of the corn down. Like I said, it was 140, 50 degree. That's what the temperature of the corn was. Well, now we needed to bring it back down to the outside air, air temperature. So that's why we have the fan going to keep to cool the corn down and keep the air flowing. And it kicks out a lot of the, the shaft in there too. That's why the fan, we leave the fan run for about two, three days just to cool it down, to cool this whole bin down. So. All right. Too, after we get done combining the corn, uh, we let them out here in the corn stalks to graze. Well, this field here had corn stalks, and then this is where we're actually standing at oats earlier in the year. We combined them in July, and then what we did was haul manure out here, and then we dissed it down, and we uh, put turnips and radishes and some rapeseed out here. Well, the oats came back volunteer, which you blow out at the end of your combine, came back volunteer, and the turnips and radishes, you can see your turnips and radishes right here what they look like. Um, it's pretty well covered out here. They'll just uh, pick them up. They'll just pull them out of the ground with their mouth, with the teeth. Or else they'll start pawing them out. Take them out. And right now, they've been out here for a week. And they've really chewed the oats down and they're working on getting these uh, the turnips and rashes pulled out of the ground right now. Um, these turnips and rashes are real high in protein and that's why it works really great with these corn stalks. They'll just mosey around back and forth between the corn stalks and the oats double and the radishes and the turnips here. Um, just to get their fill anyway. And right now we got about 160 head out here. On, there's only about 80 acres out here and we'll, they'll be out here for about two and a half weeks uh, picking out here. This is just a picture of what the cows look like now out here. And they'll stay out here until we'll probably leave them out. The corn stalk, not in this field particularly, but we'll rotate them between the corn stalks, all the rest of our corn stalks, probably till about the end of November, around Thanksgiving time, we'll bring them back to start feeding them. Because uh, we start calving in the middle of January, so we kind of want to keep the feed on them because they'll be in their last trimester. It's really important to keep their uh, to keep the energy and to keep their energy up and their, keep the flesh on them. So that's what our plan will be for the rest of this fall here.